I come from Georgia and uh, when I was uh, in high school I was studying in one of the most uh, like uh, strongest high school in mathematics and physics uh, and I was participating in the International Olympiads uh, and I was interacting with people who were already studying abroad because they were teaching us how to perfect our performance in these uh, tournaments and Olympiads in physics and uh, computer science. So that, what, that was what inspired me to go abroad. Like I wanted to be like them a bit because they were really good in science. So upon the graduation of my high school, I moved to Bulgaria, this American university in Bulgaria, which uh, unfortunately didn't have any physics program. But I went there because I had a scholarship, partial scholarship to go there and moving outside of Georgia was not so easy at that time. So back then I thought, okay, I'll do something closer to physics because I really wanted to be a physicist, but I kind of said goodbye to physics and I did computer science and mathematics. And university was a bit more uh, programming oriented rather than science oriented. It was liberal arts education, which was preparing you more for going out in the industry and uh, working. So I never thought I would come back to physics until one day when I got accepted. I applied for my master's. I just tried my uh, luck and I got accepted at the University of Oxford. And uh, this was, I was very happy, obviously, because I was coming from the small university in Bulgaria. So. There I went and I decided to do artificial intelligence and uh, some neural networks and very computer science direction. However, one day I just discovered that they had really strong courses in quantum computing. And I was like, okay, I'll try my luck. And once I went into a class, I knew this is what I wanted to do. So I completely dropped all the computer science courses, uh, which was like programming oriented, and I just signed up for quantum computing. And that was again computer science. And then I already knew that, okay, this is my path to physics, maybe. So I tried to, do, to apply for PhDs in physics. It was difficult having done computer science to start physics, but I started my program in Germany. And uh, the program was very open to teaching me physics classes. And uh, I had to study some German too, because some of the bachelor classes are only in German. So then this is how I came back to physics and I'm really happy about the decision to like, start quantum computing class and attend that particular talk during my master's. And having graduated my, from my PhD in uh, physics, now I'm doing postdoc at the University of Cologne in the group of David Gross. And I like it because I'm more independent than during my PhD. I can choose my direction of uh, science I can work with. I have more groups to collaborate with. And also I have this independence that I always wanted in the beginning of my journey in academia. And yeah, let's see where this takes us. <laughs> So unfortunately, the answer to this question is yes. Uh, so this could be from my background because I come from Eastern European countries, which are very like uh, male dominated in all the positions, all the leading positions. So as a kid already, you study that you shouldn't argue with the man. You should not argue with anybody older than you, especially a professor, but especially if it's a man. So this is a problem which follows, like it just comes with you everywhere you go on a journey. And at some point you have to just convince yourself that no, this is not the way it is because you see other people arguing. You see also some people who were grown up in the developed, more like Western countries, female who argue with the male professors. And then you realize that the problem might be within your culture. But unfortunately, then also in different countries, we see that professors and group leaders are mostly male. So then you start to doubt again that maybe problem is not only in you, it's generally the female are judged differently from male. And wherever I have been, I kind of believe it, that it's always true that I have to perform twice as well. I have to perfect my performance or whatever I say in order not to be judged. It could be that it's just my perspective, how people are judging me, but uh, I don't know, like, it, this is how it is, unfortunately, so. I'm a reviewer of the papers in QTurn, and I, in general, like to review different people's work because I learn this way about a lot of uh, different disciplines and uh, research papers. And I think for QTurn especially, it's important to have the diversity in the reviewing process. Because I believe as a female coming from the third world country, I, don't, I judge less. 
which I hope is correct, but uh, QTurn especially has this direction uh, chosen that we have to give equal opportunity to everybody applying and we shouldn't judge people applying for the uh, talks or posters. So that's my take there. I try to be as objective as possible. I think the platform of QTurn is very important because it's one of the first in the fields which so broadly discusses the topic that, uh, and the, the issues which uh, we are all bothered by. And I think it's uh, very important that we have so many speakers and uh, so many people attending it. However, I think it might be a bit too late. I think the universities uh, at the earlier stages and the high schools and even uh, uh, elementary schools should be discussing these uh, issues and addressing the diversity and inclusion. And uh, we see this happening in different places and I hope soon we will see the positive influence on our community.